the other FA Cup kind of headliner here for the fourth round is uh, man, <laughs> Liverpool's got to be sick. <laughs> Liverpool's got to be sick of seeing Brighton. Uh, Brighton's at home and they're plus one seventy. Slight dog on the three-way line. Liverpool plus 145. The draw is plus 270. I think, uh, you know, if you're a listener to the show of any veteran status, like you've listened to more than three episodes of Wonder Goal, you'll know where this is going. I, I think Brighton any way you want is the way to go here. Uh, this Liverpool team is in flux They've just not been very good, and Brighton seems to have their number. And Deserby really took it to them uh, the last time they played. So whether it's a Brighton money line, BJ, you have a different bet um, that you like here. But I, I think any way you want to back Brighton to have a, a good performance is, is worth a, a sprinkle here. Yeah, I mean, I like Brighton's team total over one and a half. It's still sitting at plus money at plus 105. I mean, Brighton completely and utterly dismantled Liverpool the last time they played. I mean, they were able to control 61% possession. They outtouched Liverpool in the penalty area 36 to 15, and then they beat them on XG 1.9 to 1. But the biggest stat of all in all of this is Brighton had an 89.9% buildup cl- completion percentage, and Liverpool's pass per defensive action was 13.2. That is significantly more than Liverpool is allowing to every other opponent so far this season. They're actually the number one team in the Premier League in build-up uh, completion percentage allowed. Brighton was able to play right through the middle of the pitch and get the ball out wide where there was acres of space because what Klopp was trying to do is he was so worried about Brighton playing through the middle of the pitch. He even brought Thiago all the way up to press the opposing center backs, but everybody was staying so compact in the middle that – if the ball got to the middle, it was just going immediately out wide. And then Matoma and March had acres and acres of space to work in. And of course, you're going up against Trent Alexander-Arnold and Robertson, who are not the best defenders in space. I mean, what's going to change this time around? Van Dyke's still out, which we've talked about many times, is maybe not the worst thing in the world. But Liverpool defensively just does not have the midfield or the defenders right now and out wide to hang with this Brighton team. I mean, under Deserby, Brighton's now what? twenty Now is 26 goals off 22.6 expected in 13 Premier League matches. They created over one and a half expected goals in both meetings with Liverpool this season. So if you're giving me a Brighton team total at over one and a half at plus 105, I'm going to take that 10 times out of 10. I mean, I project Brighton for 1.9 goals in this match. So yeah, that's how I love to play Brighton. I'll probably be on Brighton minus one and a half at, at a decent price. So I'll probably be on their money line as well. Uh, but this line has crashed. Like Brighton was an underdog. And now it's sitting at a pick them. Liverpool the first time around, you know, they're plus 105 road favorites. Obviously, they didn't close after, that though. They did not close that, but they certainly didn't close anywhere near this price, which is just showing you the respect now that Brighton is getting in the market. So I'll be on Brighton team total over one and a half and basically any way you like it. Yeah. Two weeks ago, uh, we had this exact game in the league. You mentioned it, talked about it. Uh, I said that I made this close to a toss up. I actually make Brighton a favorite now. At home. I do too, by the way. Uh, yeah. And so like, and I've upgraded both. I've upgraded Brighton since and, and Liverpool had another shaky showing at home against Chelsea where they underperformed expectations. Uh, they are now worse. Um, I still have them slightly better than Brighton, but once you include home field, just in a straight match, I would make Brighton a favorite. And now you also have a situation where Jurgen Klopp has traditionally not been a cups guy. I know last year when they were chasing the quadruple, they were playing not very rotated teams. But if you go back and you look at what Klopp has said about these cups over the years with Champions League coming up in a couple of weeks with their league position in serious danger, uh, you could see a pretty rotated Liverpool here. The problem is they can't even really rotate that much because they have so many injuries. But again, like there's a much higher risk of the big six road team here going to Brighton and rotating than there is. Uh, Brighton, who will see this as a really big opportunity to have a, a successful, you know, cup run this season. Uh, I make Brighton a favorite. I bet Brighton as a dog. I would bet them up until they're favored. Uh, and so I like the Seagulls once again. Uh, it feels like we're getting to the maybe the apex of the market on Deserby, and that's very sad. But we're not there yet, especially in these spots against Liverpool. But I'm, I, I think their weekend next weekend they're they're like minus three hundred against Bournemouth, which. Um, we will see about that. I've got to think about that some more. <laughs> yeah. I might, might, might be betting Bournemouth <laughs> plus one, one in like three quarters. 